Hi, I'm Mike Greiner, a lifelong democratic activist who's concerned about the direction our country is taking. If you share my concerns, then maybe you could like this video, subscribe to this channel, and maybe even hit that little bell that will let you know when I post something new, because I do try to post pretty frequently. So today, I want to talk about the latest report that's generated hysteria among Republicans in Washington, and that is the report of inflation, namely what's called the Consumer Price Index, or CPI, which you might hear quoted frequently. And I want to assure you that now is not the time to panic. If you can imagine it, the Republicans are making a mountain out of a molehill and overblowing the situation. So let's talk about this so you have the information you need to be able to respond to your friends who might be asking you questions about this. By way of background, the Consumer Price Index is basically a statistic that's created by the Bureau of Labor Statistics in Washington. And what they do is that they take a basket of goods that are the typical things that consumers will spend their money on on a day to day basis. Things like where you live, gas, groceries, cars, anything like that, that typically consumers will spend their money on. And then it takes an average of that and compares where it's at from month to month. And so the change in that is what people get concerned about when they talk about inflation. So what we saw in the latest report of the CPI is that there was a jump of about 5% last month, which is more than what The Economist had predicted, where they predicted a 4.7% jump. So of course, time for the hysteria. Well, I talked in a prior video that I'll link up here or up here, what it means when a certain statistic exceeds the expectations of economists. So that's worth taking with a grain of salt to start with. But beyond that, let's just talk about this here for a second. Surged 5% in May from a year ago. Hmm. Well, what was going on a year ago? A year ago, basically, the economy was in lockdown. So there was nothing going on. And so obviously, there's a big jump from what was going on last year because everybody was shut down. There was no economic activity going on. Interestingly enough, the biggest increases in prices, the items that are actually driving the overall percentage change that's so large are number one, used cars and trucks, which people are buying now because there's a shortage of semiconductors. So you can't buy new vehicles. They just aren't available. Uh, and what's more is people are going back to work. So they're having to buy cars again to get back to get back into the swing of things. Number two, airline fares. Well, a year ago, Airlines were barely even operating. People weren't traveling. People were afraid to get on an airplane because it was a place to spread COVID. Next would be food away from home. Well, a year ago, who was eating in restaurants? Restaurants were another place that were basically shut down as a result of the COVID shutdowns. So if you're surprised that prices have gone up dramatically in those three areas, well, you really haven't been paying attention very much. Don't believe me? Well, look at this graph that I'm putting up here. As you can see, this is the Consumer Price Index less food and energy. Food and energy is frequently excluded from the CPI calculations because they tend to be very volatile. And sticky means that they just have measured it over a period of time. If you look at this back in May of 2020, look, there was a big drop there. Things started to recover a little bit after that. Then there's another big drop in January 2021. So I'm going to give you a prediction here. In January of 2022, you're going to see another burst of hysteria from Republicans talking about how the CPI has jumped so much and we're on the verge of huge inflationary pressures. So as a result, we cannot fund infrastructure, the families plan, or the other types of things that Democrats want to be able to do. Don't believe me? Well, here's superstar Senator Mike Crapo on Twitter talking about how inflation is making it so that we're not able to proceed with infrastructure investment and stimulus spending. And what's more is he says this is the largest year over year increase in price since the Great Recession. Hello? Why would that be the case? Because back then we were emerging from a recession and now we're emerging from a recession. Don't believe me? Let's take a look again at the at the at the graph here. Each of these gray lines here represents a recession. And look at what we see when we see a big jump in the CPI. Oh my goodness, that is where we are just emerging from a recession. So the big jumps that you see here back in 2002, after the recession that we had resulting from the attack on 
Then you look back here. Here's the Great Recession right here, the next big jump. And if you look at what we've got here, the big jump that everybody's all hysterical about right now that is clearly recovering from the recession that we've just been going through is smaller than the jump we saw in those prior recessions. This is nothing to get crazed out about. So why is this happening? This is happening because basically we're looking to turn around the economy on a dime. The economy was going gangbusters for a while. Then all of a sudden, in comes COVID, everything gets shut down. Boom. We suddenly have a huge drop in economic activity. Suddenly, businesses need to stop everything they're doing. People were laid off in massive numbers. And now what we need to do is we need to turn it all around. People had been laid off. All of a sudden, very quickly, the economy is bouncing back again. So we need to be calling back all these people. People who might have made certain arrangements that are hard to undo as a result of being laid off. Things like taking their kids out of daycare, for example. Now they need to look around and find new daycare for their kids. Well, as it turns out, during the recession, many daycare facilities closed down. So what are people supposed to do with their kids? They can't just go to work immediately and leave their kids at home. They need to find something safe to do with them. Well, that takes time. And so it's going to take time for people to get back into the economy. It's going to take time for the farmers to increase back up their output to meet the demand now that people are going back to restaurants. It's going to take time for car manufacturers to be able to increase again the production of vehicles where they have been shutting it down because people basically stopped buying vehicles. These are all the types of things that are going to take time to turn around. And during this period, there's going to be some difficulty managing it. And that's really what we're seeing with this volatility in prices. And again, we're comparing these prices to what they were a year ago. And again, a year ago, the prices were very low as a result of the fact that nobody was doing anything. And again, we're going to see the exact same thing happen in January and February, when again, a year before, prices were very low. So the point of all this is, number one, we need to understand that much of this hysteria over inflation is based on the fact that we're starting from what's called a low base. That if you look back a year ago, the jump is inevitably going to be high, even if we just go back to normal, because what was last year was so low. Number two, we're going to see certain industries that were shut down driving up the consumer price index more so than other industries. So for example, the airline industry, which basically was not operating, the restaurant industry, which basically was not operating, used vehicles, which suddenly have become a hot commodity because of the fact that the manufacturers are having trouble making enough vehicles to meet demand. These categories are going to have huge jumps in prices simply because there's very high demand. And because of the fact that the consumer price index is an average it's kind of gathers together this group of all the different prices. Those big jumps are going to drive up the average more so than they would normally. Finally, we need to understand that this type of price jump is normal as we're recovering from a recession, simply because of the fact that demand is starting to bounce back. And especially with this recession, where we had this sudden change, where all of a sudden, because of the lockdowns, all economic activity basically came to an end. And now, because of the vaccinations, suddenly economic activity is getting started very quickly again. I can tell you, as a former business owner, it's very hard to operate a business with those kind of changes. It takes time to be able to change your capacity. And that's really what businesses are dealing with right now. So if you're worried because you're seeing this hysterical talk about inflation, don't get crazed out about it. It's nothing to worry about yet, and it might not at all be something to worry about going forward. And that's why the Federal Reserve, quite frankly, is pretty sanguine about the whole situation. Secondly, you have to remember that this type of information is going to be used as a tool by Republicans to beat over the head of Democrats. Surprise, surprise, they're trying to use it for their own political advantage. So if you think that Senator Mike Crapo, Republican of Idaho, tweeting that, oh my gosh, the CPI is jumping by the highest amount since the Great Recession is something that we should take seriously when he raises it as a criticism against an infrastructure bill. Well, take it for what it is with a grain of salt, probably even more than a grain of salt, because he's basically just using statistics that really are not all that surprising to people who pay attention to this type of data to try to make a political case against something that's really needed in America. 
So feel free to spread this information to your friends, neighbors, and relatives. And if you like this video, if you could like it, subscribe to my channel, maybe even click that little bell to notify you when I post new videos. Also, if you agree with me or disagree with me or have any comments or questions, please feel free to mention them in the comment section below. I love to get comments from you. I will see you in the next video. And in the meantime, let's hope for continued progress. Thank you.